Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, uh, some food safety concerns, um, in particular how food gets contaminated, right? And of course, foodborne contamination ultimately leads to foodborne disease, and nobody really likes sick food, right? Um, <laughs> little chuckles here and there, but really this is a very serious thing. We're talking about 48 million cases of foodborne illness a year in the United States. That's about one in six people, and it translates to about 125 to 128,000 hospitalizations and about 3,000 deaths. That's from food, foodborne disease in one of the most developed countries in the world. In addition, that costs us about 70 to 80 billion dollars. And that's just in lost time at work, healthcare costs, et cetera. It's not taking into account things like investigative costs, recall costs, or product avoidance costs. If you take into account, say, the Peanut Corporation of America outbreak from 2009, that outbreak alone cost the industry estimated $1 billion for one outbreak. Now, granted, 700 cases in 46 states, 3,900 products recalled but very significant. Um, but what we're talking about by and large when we're talking about food foodborne disease, it doesn't matter what language you're saying it in or what language you're discussing it in, right? We're always talking about the same thing, really. <laughs> Diarrhea and vomiting, right? But we can go on, we can call it what everybody else does, and you know, there's name after name after name, <laughs> and I think we can keep going, right? So some of them are pretty risque, so read carefully. Um, as we move on, um, one of the ways that food gets contaminated is water. Okay, water is integral in many of our food systems. And I just want to focus a little bit on water, and in particular, let's talk about our shellfish industry. In this state, we have one of the largest commercial aquaculture uh, uh, industries in the country. Okay, it's about $200 million a year, employs about 3,000 people. Our major uh, um, Products tend to be uh, the oyster and then the mussels. Those are those top two pictures. But gooey duck, not insignificant, and mussels, not insignificant as well. Okay? The problem with these is that we do see shellfish associated outbreaks. And one of the leading causes of these shellfish associated outbreaks is norovirus. And quite frankly, this is the most accurate picture I could think of. If you get norovirus, you do not want it. It blasts out both ends quite significantly. Estimated 21 million cases a year of norovirus in the U.S. Okay, if you factor in 21 million cases times three episodes per day, maybe a four-day duration, uh, maybe 200 mils per episode, and that's conservative. We're talking maybe up to a liter. That's on the order of about five times 10 to the 10th mils of diarrhea, or on the order of 15 million gallons. Now, how many people know what this picture is? Niagara. Niagara Falls. How many people have been to Niagara? Okay, fair number of you. you. You can put that in your mind. 15, 20 seconds coming over that falls, right? But for those that haven't been there, most of you probably been swimming before, and that's the equivalent of about 20 Olympic swimming pools full of diarrhea. <laughs> okay, a significant amount. Now, norovirus is not just an issue in uh, uh, shellfish. It's an issue in produce and other food items as well. Um, again, water is hyper involved in our produce production, right? From all the way from farm to fork. Of course, noro is not the only bug we worry about. E. coli outbreaks are well known and, and well publicized in the news. Um, I'm sure most of you have heard of it. And the problem is, as we see, is there are so many steps where water comes in contact with that lettuce as it's growing. It grows on the ground. It's not growing on trees. It's growing close to the ground where it's got soil contamination as a possible risk from splatter as the water lands on it. You've got irrigation water. You've got pesticides and fertilizers that are diluted with water that may be not treated at all and being applied directly to the leaves. You've got pickers' hands, and if they don't have adequate sanitation in the fields to wash their hands, they can contaminate the vegetables that way. Then you come into a processing plant and you're talking about putting uh, uh, bins of contaminated produce in with bins of clean produce and running them all through the same flume. Now granted they put disinfectants in there, but there's a lot of organic acids, a lot of dirt and things like this that make it not work so well. So eventually it gets to the bags after it's been washed a few times and then we've got the issue of people wash it at home still. I can still think of one of my favorite outbreaks 
uh, again, going back to Nora, just because it's one of my pet bugs. Um, but there was an outbreak where a sous chef came to work, got sick in the sink. He rinsed the sink out. Then he went in to rinse the salad. <laughs> Pretty much everybody got sick that night from eating at that restaurant. Fun times. Um, well, then you gotta ask the question of exactly where does that contamination come from? And one of the things that my lab works on in particular is really trying to track contamination sources from their source until they get to the people that they're infecting. Okay, and so we, we try to follow things. So one of the possible aspects are these large concentrated animal feeding operations. And the issue there is you've got hundreds to thousands of cattle or pigs or chickens or other things all in one place in a very tight city-like environment and they all poop. Okay, well the waste treatment there is not the waste treatment we see for domestic systems in the US. By and large those right down there the retention ponds. We let the liquid settle and then we pump off the liquid and we harvest the solids out and compost them. Okay? Um, sometimes that works, sometimes less so. So I'm going to leave you with one question here just for our discussions a bit later is, you know, what can we do to improve that overall safety as well as the sustainability of our food systems as we're moving forward? Thank you and I'll turn it over to Peter. Great.